Hey there, welcome in. I am Tactical Lance with some information to hopefully help you live a little bit longer and be a little more healthy while you're roaming around in Daisy. If you're like me when I hit the spawn button, I know I am going to be out in the middle of nowhere and that starter fruit only goes so far. Once the cold and hunger sets in, there's no escape. Those cold weather diseases kick in. That's right. We're talking about cold and flu in Daisy today. Now, there is a way to practically become invulnerable to those diseases. Uh, that's a little bit later down in your gameplay. I actually intend to talk about that in a later video, so make sure that you hit the subscribe and bell icon so you know when we post next. Now, back to what we were talking about, colds and flus and daisy, you know, what causes them, how they're spread, symptoms, and how to cure them. So first things first, when we're talking about the cold and flu and DayZ, uh, what exactly are they? And they are actually two different diseases uh, in DayZ. There's both a cold and a flu. The differences highlighted between them are with their symptoms. It's not a big difference. But now, why they're the big, why they're a big problem with the cold and flu, you are coughing and sneezing. It's uncontrollable. That's going to pose a problem if you are in a higher trafficked area trying to sneak or hide while you're sneezing. Not a good combination. I mean, who wants to deal with death by sneezing? Uh, one of the major differences between the cold and the flu in the game is that when your character has the flu, you are going to see that blurred vision animation, uh, and that's going to be due to the fever that comes with the flu that's not there with the cold. So that's kind of your, your big hallmark between the two. The zombies, though, they're not the only thing that bite in Trenaris. The cold and the flu are actually exposure diseases, and it's from the biting cold and being out in that without the proper gear or being out and being wet or damp for too long in that cold weather. Now, there is a, another aspect to that, uh, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Typically, though, when it's an exposure-related infection of cold and flu, your temperature bar has to be down into the blue for a little little length of time uh, in addition to you know just randomly being cold. Uh, another possible way to catch cold and flu is from player to player contact. Survivors can spread the cold and flu amongst themselves. It is very, very contagious uh, and it's con contagious out to about 10 feet or so. So three meters for you know the folks that aren't on the Imperial system like us here in the US. Uh, if you want to put that in perspective of a distance in the game, 10 feet is approximately the length of a gun. Uh, and that cold is, is infectious when you cough and sneeze out to 9.38, I believe the, the footage was. Now, you can help to slow down the spread of that a couple of different ways. Both you and whoever you're in contact with can be wearing some type of face covering, whether that's your, your motorbike helmet or if it's the, the, the sawdust mask or the doctor's mask that we've all become used to with, with COVID. If you are wearing a, a ski mask or a bandana, that's another way to kind of help prevent the spread of the cold and flu from one player to another. Now, what you're going to want to do though if you are wearing those uh, and you are sick you are absolutely going to want to make sure you have an alcoholic tincture uh, as you get rid of that cold and flu you're going to want to make sure you sanitize whatever your face covering is as you can actually reinfect yourself with that cold and flu that you have gotten rid of so one of the other things that you'll also want to make sure of is while you're sick you have disposable food food you're not going to you're either going to eat them when sitting or food that you're going to be okay just throwing out. Uh, the reason why is because if you're sick uh, and you go back and you re-eat off of that food that you've already eaten from as a sick person and now you're well, you can actually give yourself back that cold. Uh, same thing as if, you, you know, if you're sick and you take a bite off that food and you feed another survivor from it, you also give them the chance to catch your cold as well. Now, Daisy is a little is similar and a little different from real life when it comes to beating a cold or a flu. Uh, in real life, if you catch the cold, or catch a cold or catch the flu, you're kind of stuck with it until it runs its course. Daisy's a little different. You can actually, you know, hunker down, stay warm, stay dry, stay fed, stay watered. That will help you kick the flu, and over time, it will go away. It does take. A good amount of time. I've only ever kicked the cold or the flu a couple times that way, uh, and it's taken me several in-game days to get that disease to pass through my system. The other way that you could possibly get rid of the cold and flu is by taking tetracycline. Uh, tetracycline is very effective at getting rid of your cold and flu. Now, I don't know if this is actually the way that this mechanic works. It's just kind of one of those things as I've been researching for this video. It seems as though the quicker I get the tetracycline in my system when I develop the cold, the quicker my character kicks that cold. Now, one thing when you're taking the tetracycline that you will want to note uh, is that you have to wait when you take the tetracycline. Each tetracycline tablet lasts in your survival system for about five minutes. You cannot eat tetracycline one right behind the other. The mechanic just does not work. You have to wait for your medication icon in the lower right hand corner to go away. So approximately five minutes. And then you'll want to take an additional 
Now, I have typically noticed, as I was researching for this video, that it's anywhere from two to four tablets typically for me to get rid of a cold. I have seen it take longer, I have seen it only take one. It kind of really seems unlucky to drop on that, but unfortunately, there's not a better answer. Uh, now, there is one thing of, of note that we want to make sure that we talk about here when it comes to medications that take in KZ to help fight off things like the cold and the flu. Multivitamins are an amazing thing in that regard. If you're near someone that is that is sick, does have a cold or does have a flu, in Daisy, you absolutely will want to take a multivitamin. Uh, what a multivitamin does, is similar to a tetracycline, it lasts for five minutes in your system. Uh, and the benefit of the multivitamin is that it boosts your immune system to 100%. And it's, a and it's at 100% for that duration of five. When your immune system is at 100%, you cannot catch things like a cold and the flu. You are immune to them. So as long as you are near someone that has a cold and the flu, make sure you're taking the, the multivitamin fairly frequently you know as one wears off take another keep yourself well so even while they're in the process of getting over it you're able to keep from getting sick now there is a couple of other medications in the game that may or may not help you out uh, when it comes to colds and flus first is first the codeine tablets will help they are a so if you're somewhere where you need to hide or need to try to stay more quiet the codeine tablets will help with that so it helps to limit the amount of cough it helps to limit the amount that your character is visibly taking it does still happen, they do still cough, they do still sneeze. It's just a longer frequency in between those coughs and sneezes. There are other pain medications in the game, whether you're talking about your morphine detector, those do nothing for your cold flu symptoms, even though they're pain killing food. In that regard, they, they don't do anything to help you out. So if you're in a higher traffic area and you are sick, you will want to have some of that food in your hand. It'll kind of help take the edge off, slow down the frequency. So it might give you a chance to stay alive a little longer, even while you're trying to hide. But that mostly sums up everything I've got here today about colds and flus. Let me know in the comments below if there is something that you know that maybe I missed or something that you think I should know that and maybe I missed. Uh, and as always, if you find this content valuable, make sure that you pound on that subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell icon. That way you'll get notified the next time that we go live.